Okay, so welcome to the Coaching Culture Podcast. And today I've got a fabulous guest with me, my Coffee with a Coach podcast. Somebody who I've met virtually through LinkedIn and who has continued to follow our coaching culture journey. But equally and likewise, I've absolutely followed his journey. And he absolutely intrigues me, fascinates me, and I think is an absolutely brilliant guest for today's podcast because today's a coffee with a coach but with a really specific focus on a topic that is so so important and probably not spoken enough about and that's neurodiversity so welcome Mr Mike Bedford Hello, Joe. Thanks for having me as a guest on the podcast. And I mean, you know what our conversation is going to be like today. We're just going to go with the flow, see how it goes, go wherever we want to in this in this conversation. But I think what's really important, Mike, is if you share with our readers and our listeners today a little bit more about you and your story, and we keep focusing on the neurodiversity element and coaching. Sure. Over sure. to you. Yeah. Good gosh, where do we start? Um, so, yeah, as Joe said, I've known Joe for a few years now. Um, and I've been kind of following the, uh, the journey of coaching culture. Um, I'm a bit of a fanboy um, and well connected to, to the organisation. Um, my journey, gosh, so I've been in the UK, working for UK government for probably like the last 20 odd years. I've always been in some kind of people focused role um mainly around people development and helping people get better at what it is that they uh, they do with some spells out in the business doing kind of business and, and change work and policy work um, so i've had a bit of exposure in different areas too but it's always been my career anchor one of the better words has always been in the people development space um, and i've had quite a varied and diverse career um, in my time i've worked in some really big um corporate organizations uh, one of the better words um kind of cutting edge um, of, of kind of uh, uk policy um as well so there's been a lots of focus around um, people development and, and well-being particularly over the last few years um as well so i've been able to kind of really owning and fusing in that kind of holistic people approach too, which has been absolutely fantastic. Um, probably got into coaching properly, coaching in terms of developing as a, as a professional coach over the last um, few years, but I've always been coaching and, and mentoring in some capacity over that whole 20 years yeah. plus period. I even was a work coach in a previous role um, in the, on, on the front line of kind of operational delivery, working in a job centre, coaching and supporting people into work, some of the most hardest to reach customers to. Um, so I've had a really kind of diverse um, experience of, of coaching, but it's, coaching has, has always kind of been something that's really kind of motivated and, and, and infused me um, and, and an area that I've always wanted to kind of work within um but never kind of had the chance as i guess as, as a job to do that as well which probably takes me to kind of the direction of travel that i'm moving in now so yeah that's briefly well, my last 20 years in kind of summary uh, so very uh, yeah brief summary of a, of a fabulous career so far and i know you're on an exciting next part of your career i, I always i like the word career journey because it kind of does what it says on the mm. tin some people cringe when you say journey but i like it because i think it is a journey and mm. and you know there's lots of twists and turns and bends and moves forwards and backwards and sideways so i think it is a journey so share where you're at at the moment and what inspired mm. you to um, move into because obviously we can see from be brilliant um is a a key part of your future mm. i guess so tell us a little mm. bit more about that okay yeah so thank you um yeah so moving towards my goal of of kind of um running my own um coaching people development uh, training um, company has always been a goal um, for me and i guess the more i've been exposed to kind of the the coaching community and coaching world i've kind of developed my own uh, ability to kind of reflect on myself and, and, and kind of front up to those those inner demons and those kind of self-limiting beliefs that have kind of held me back all of those all these years kind of you know the, the the proverbial devil on my shoulder telling me why i can't do this 
uh, and actually, you know, for the people I've been fortunate and privileged to meet um, over over the past uh, few few years, have really kind of helped, um, including yourself, Joe, have kind of been able to inspire and motivate me to actually confront the bull by the horns and actually realise that I can do this and start moving in towards that direction, towards actually making that dream a reality and turning that into a goal. I think the important thing is turning a dream into a goal, isn't it, as well? Yeah, um, And I think that's probably one of the, the key things that's happened um, over the last kind of probably six months is, is actually formulating and turning that, 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 goal, that dream into actually a set of goals that take you towards my end goal. So at the moment, I'm, I'm kind of doing, you know, it's freelance in addition to my kind of full-time job as well um, and you know my employer you know kind of laid out on on, on the table that this, this is the direction i'm going in and kind of make sure that you know there's going to be no conflict of interest yeah. in which there isn't in terms of kind of what i'm doing and why, why i want to do it and all the rest of it so as, as the kind of as the brand and the business builds then eventually that will taper out and that's kind of part of, of, of the goal and the plan is to get to a point where eventually i have enough clients and enough work to actually take it off completely Brilliant. that um, corporate world and leave the corporate world entirely. And that's not to say that I'm in a, a really bad place in terms of my, my corporate role either, um, Joe, because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very privileged, I guess, to work in a place where I work. I've got a really supportive team around me. I work with a, a great manager, all of that kind of stuff. But do you know what, Joe? That's just, that's just not enough for me. And it's not kind of me then living up to my values and, and, and you know my uh, aspirations of, of, of what I can do and where I want to be um, as, as a person too. I think uh, having known you and, and, and now I do know you I, I think it's more about that reach of the impact you can make on a, on a broader bigger mm. stage you know, global worldwide what does that look like as opposed to in one organization here and now where you're doing I'm sure yeah. a great job and that I know you really yeah. enjoy but actually you know that's limiting to where you yeah. could potentially tap into and the variety of people you could impact, organizations. Yeah. I think there's so much more potential there to be yeah. untapped and you're on that journey, which is which is exciting. But let's talk specifically about neurodiversity, a topic mm. that you know I, I can't proclaim to be any expert in. Um, it absolutely fascinates me to see mm. the words neurodiversity and also what does it mean in organizations mm. what does it mean for individuals and leaders and mm. managers you know how are they getting on with this topic that you know mm. let's be honest 20 years ago probably was hardly being mentioned so mm. talk to me what it means to you mike and how mm. can you help us understand it okay i'll, I'll do my best to, um, no that's good I, I, I certainly think just to kind of outline to listeners first and foremost is I don't class myself as, as an expert in the field of neurodiversity no. by any stretch. There, there are far more academically qualified people than me who can talk about this subject. But what I do have is I do have real lived experience in neurodiversity. So, you know, I, I can, I'm very happy to talk about that and talk about my lived experience, which is powerful too. Um, and also kind of how I've kind of seen potentially organisations um, mature, I guess, yeah. in terms of the journey, um, in terms of understanding, A, what neurodiversity is, and B, how can they get the best results out of people who think differently? Um, because essentially that's what neurodiversity is. If you take out the huge name, neurodivergent, neurodi neurodiversity, uh, and all the rest of it. I mean, neurodiversity, neurodiversity itself is a spectrum yep. of different conditions. So for listeners who, who might already know this, I apologize, but if not, you know, it's well worth just looking into if you're interested in the subject of neurodiversity and the different, um, you know, spectrum spectrums and conditions that fall under um, the neurodivergent um, umbrella yeah. so for example you could have adhd you could have dyslexia is very well known you now i yeah. myself am, am, am dyslexic and i also yeah. have another uh, condition called dyscalculia which is is the lesser known cousin of dyslexia right okay um, so we check in, I'm very happy to Tell share me about more, that. Yep. But there's dyspraxia, DCD, you know, 
all kinds of conditions, autism, you know, the, the, there's a whole, as I said, a whole spectrum of conditions that make up neurodiversity. And I think that is the key word is diversity here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So and, and rather than focusing, and there's, there's, there's a hell of a lot of debate within the actually neurodiverse community itself about um, people's own level of comfort with being labelled as being disabled. Yeah. Or not. Um, technically, yeah. when you apply for a job, you kind of almost have to kind of say that you are disabled if you want to get to be, I guess, on at least a level playing field with other candidates. Right. Okay. Uh, which, which, yes, yeah, so you're talking about kind of maturity and, and, and employers and where they've got to go. I would suggest the recruitment process completely needs a complete overhaul. I was going to say that's because the word disabled itself, you know, is is a term that you know is protected in 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 law. Um, mm. But you know, one of my questions here is how do you harness it as a superpower? Mm. So as an something that's an, an enabler mm. of mm. thinking mm. differently, and mm. you know, the the value that neurodiverse thinking can bring to mm. so many. Um, situations mm. organizations people and i think mm. that's really interesting isn't it if 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 people are regarding neurodiversity as therefore a disability is that how you would see it mike i i well gosh i don't like sitting on the fence on things but i think sometimes it's helpful when you're in a forced situation so for example if you're part of a recruitment campaign yeah to be able to at least give you the same opportunities as yeah. someone else has that if you don't um, declare, for want yeah. of a better word, you'll get a disadvantage right. for not doing so. And it is a protective char characteristic yeah. under the uh, you know under the employment um, laws and the Equalities Act and so yeah. on and so forth. So. It's, it's it's a tricky one, and it's, it comes down to what, how does that individual feel um, about? And there's no right or wrong. We talk yeah. about diversity. It's a similar message, isn't it? Across it is. diversity and inclusion, and I think that's one of the questions that you might want to ask is how do people have that conversation with with yeah. someone? Is is it's not shying away from that conversation? It's being being able to have that open, authentic conversation with someone. What is their preference, and how do they see themselves, and how do, would you like to be, you know, um, addressed, or you know, what 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 do, feels right for you um, as Brilliant. as an individual, as well. Um, and what are your needs? I guess it's, I bet it's about what is your what are your needs as an individual, as opposed to well, I know somebody else who's got mm. this condition, so therefore I'm assuming your needs are the same as theirs, mm -hmm. which is yeah, totally wrong. It's a good point. It's a really good point, and absolutely spot on. That nobody is the same. No. So, just because we might share the same characteristic, yeah, it doesn't mean that we have the same needs. No. Nope. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stigma and ignorance still around um, around neurodiversity and neurodivergent conditions as well, uh, and people, you know, um, can get put into boxes. Yeah. Quite, quite easily. So you could think of, oh, well, you know, Mike's dyslexic, so therefore he can't spell or something like that, yeah. or, or, or Mike might have trouble reading or whatever. Yeah. That just might not be the case at, yeah. at, at all. Um, there's so many uh, different areas to consider um, when you're thinking about someone's individual um, condition, because like a disability, a, di a disability is individual to that person so a neurodiverse condition is unique to that person and therefore their needs are completely different yeah. for every single person so it comes back to the point I, I guess again about having the honest authentic conversation yeah. with people so that you don't tie yourself up in knots and you don't trick yourself up and you don't offend with someone or say the wrong thing to them. because i won't be offended if someone comes from a genuine place positive intent wanting to find out more about me and how we can work back together. Absolutely. But if Ask the question. The point of, well, you know, actually, you know, uh, you know, things work pretty well for, around the uh, mic. So, uh, 
you know, and I start to feel like I'm actually more of a hindrance or a burden, actually, rather than what I could contribute and what positive yeah. skills I can, you know, uh, how can we all work together yeah, as a team, totally. rather than me kind of feeling like a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. Which is, 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 and I'll be honest with you, Joe, and be honest with your listeners, that throughout my career, I have felt like a square peg yeah. in a round hole, where there has been that ignorance and that lack of understanding, and almost being kind of, Let's give Mike the kind of important sort of thing to do because he can possibly comprehend how things work like and he'd struggle anyway, wouldn't he, with his conditions. And I'm sure I'm not an isolated incident no. in, in terms of, of that either. I'm glad to say that as I've progressed and worked with and, and I think more education has come out um, to support employers and individuals around that. It's become more so that I think people are more open now and want to find out and, and want to learn more about as evidence by we're having this conversation today absolutely right you know uh, so what i'm hearing mike is ask the question have an open um, authentic conversation and focus absolutely. on the individual's needs don't make yeah. assumptions no. um and and actually if you think about that, boiling all that back that is just about having a human conversation yeah. that yeah. we're wanting more and more leaders and managers to have in yeah. their organization yeah and this is just a conversation with you know, ideally, even if they've got zero awareness, yeah, yeah. build the awareness through asking the question, stay curious and yeah. open-minded and yeah. empathetic and yeah. building that trust through that great conversation, which are all the things that you and I know are linked yeah. to coaching. Yeah. Actually, you know, care for somebody as a human, yeah. as an individual. Yeah. It doesn't matter who they are or yeah. whether you've given them a label or they've given themselves a label yeah. what is it about them that they what do they need from you to help them be the best they can be absolutely absolutely spot on joe it's not rocky science no. um but, but yet people are afraid to have that conversation for, for fear of saying the wrong thing as well and one thing i'd like to add as well is is when you do have that conversation actually people are quite surprised at what different skills and strengths you can bring to the table and, and different way you can look at things and solve problems because neurodivergent people are some of the uh, greatest minds and thinkers and creative people of our time you Definitely. only have to look up i won't give names and things like that but you only have to do a quick google search and look and look up that information and you'll see some quite surprising names on yep. there who are some of the pioneers and, and yes. our world wouldn't be in world peace today without that sort of thing as well so i don't understand why we're frightened of that uh, in terms of organizations in terms of having conversations in terms of being open enough to to actually think about well perhaps there is another way of doing things as well we don't have to do things the way that they've always done just because that's the way that the majority of people like to do them Absolutely. because otherwise you'll, you'll never improve either you're missing out on a huge opportunity and that is one of my questions how so how has it um impacted you positively or not so positively throughout your mm. career mm. Mm. and how will you or do you harness mm. Mm. it as a superpower because i know mm. the thing i've known mm. you now for a number of years mm. and i can see and and when you know and here i've experienced you on a number of occasions mm. and i recognize the superpowers there mm. so firstly how has it helped or hindered you throughout your career you know mm. and share whatever mm. you want but mm -hmm. also then how do you um harness you know Mm. neurodiversity is a superpower because i think you're mm -hmm. right there's so many brilliant minds mm. that are most innovative creative mm. just mm. fabulous but it's about mm. harnessing it it is it is and a, the, the tragedy is joe here is and, and i'm a neurodivergent champion so i'm not to use this as a platform to, to yeah, actually great. champion neurodiversity brilliant. as well so you know, I make no apologies for doing that. Um, you don't mind the well. champion label, Mike. You don't I, mind I, the chat. I, I don't. No, I don't mind. <laughs> Quite that right. At all. And I, I will stand on that platform and I will, I will preach and, and kind of good. spread the good gospel of, of neurodivergent minds and neurodivergent people and all the yeah. brilliant things that we bring to the table and that we can do as well. Um, but in terms of my own journey, I'd say it's been mixed, Joe. Okay. If I'm being honest with you, I'd say there's been some absolutely terrible experiences in my career was a really kind of uh, knocked my confidence um riddled me with self-doubt and kind of created that imposter syndrome myself um and, and then i've worked with some really brilliant people who have been absolutely supportive and and and, and really opened their minds up to what potential i can bring to the table 
and, and change their entire ways of working to kind of let me go in and, and actually bring that to the table. And we've had some brilliant results that perhaps we would never have got to if I hadn't put those ideas out there and we hadn't done it. And sometimes it's kind of, you, again, going back to that kind of working with people and making the most out of, of their talent and abilities. So an example might be a neurotypical colleague. So, yeah. for example, thinking of someone I work with right now, they might be really good at kind of doing the kind of process things, kind of getting those stages that really kind yeah. of granular, kind of uh, linear uh, yeah. approach to kind of way. It's, whereas I can come in and I can see the big picture. I can see the strategy. I can see the future being and where we're going with all this stuff. And then we can work together and work backwards and meet in the middle yeah. as well. So, you know, it's, it really is kind of getting the best of both worlds by actually harnessing the power of both neurotypical and neurodivergent minds. Uh, and again, what but, you've just described there is playing to strengths. You mm. know, call it what we like, but you've just described playing to strengths. Mm. That is clearly mm. your strength. That is the, you know, the other mm. colleague's strength. Let's play to those and see how we can collaborate to, to make it even bigger than the two of us together. Yeah. And yeah. again, that isn't rocket science, is it? Maybe we're getting... F fearful yeah. of the words neurodiversity out in the workplace yeah. when yeah. actually it's harnessing strengths harnessing the best of individuals and and having that human conversation as we keep saying um to bring out the best in people which as you and mm -hmm. i know and I, me and mm -hmm. you will beat the drum forever but that's what mm -hmm. coaching conversations do and they don't have to be complicated they no. just have to be kind empathetic supportive build trust and you know mm. and listen mm. yeah yeah absolutely um i think probably my experience tells me that people are fearful of change yeah um and, and when you are someone who is different and i'm proud to be different um and, and when you are someone who's different and who looks at things who doesn't kind of follow a kind of uh, a linear way of doing things um and, and kind of challenges your perspectives and your way of doing things that can be quite frightening for yeah. people who have only ever known that and you maybe can't see the the bigger picture um yeah. uh, you know a frightened man perhaps even threatened i would say from yeah. my own experience as well you know people you know might come and think who is this guy telling me about kind of all these great ideas and these kind of strategies and things like that he should know his place yeah you know, yeah. so perhaps I've experienced that. Well, I definitely have experienced that throughout my career as well. Uh, and, and it's overcome some of those, those those challenges as well, isn't it? You know, it's having that that uh, psychologically safe space to be able to be yourself and to be able to pop those ideas out there, no matter about where you sit in that hierarchical system. Uh, it's being able to actually really utilise those powers and to be able to put those on the table for the greater good as well. And so what, yeah. what do you think so listening to what you're saying you know and what in your opinion what should organizations be doing so they are sat there thinking mm. oh, what do we do you know i don't want to offend anybody i want to do the right thing you know yeah. but i don't want to get wrapped up in policies here this is about mm. you know mm. conversations what what would you encourage and urge organizations to do to help take their culture forward and embrace neurodiversity and embrace all individuals no matter who they mm. are mm. what would you be saying to them? what what kind of if you if it was down to Mike and be brilliant mm. what would you be telling them to kind of or advising them to do oh gosh advising <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Not the okay. advice trap. Michael doesn't understand you. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be proud of us if we said we were advice. But he, he, he wouldn't. Would he? he wouldn't. Um, but I would say, um, and I think we've already touched on it, haven't we, Joe? Is I think you need to be uh, you need to be authentic, don't you? Um, yeah. And if you're talking about being diversity and inclusion, is is top of most organisations' radar, isn't it? Yeah. If, if if not, it should be. Yeah. Uh, and it covers such a wide spectrum of, of different areas does diversity and inclusion, neurodiversity and disability being one of them as well. You need to show that you're, you are uh, an authentic leader. You need to show that you, you, you live up to those those values and those words. They're not just kind of, um, you know, posted on the wall. You actually need to live and breathe them don't you, as, as a leader. And you need to champion um, that, that safe space to have those, those types of conversations that we're we're talking 
about and show that you value difference in terms of difference of thinking, different yeah. approaches, and that you, you, you will work with people to help them be the best versions of themselves possible. Um, and that ultimately that you, you value um, that, that difference of, a thing, of, of, of thinking. A great example of an organization that, that lives and breathes right, is, is GCHQ. Yeah. Um, and they actively go out recruiting neurodivergent people yeah. because of their ability to spot patterns and identify trends and things like that that neurotypical people just can't see, yeah. whereas neurodivergent people do. And they're in charge of our entire like the you know, cyber security, security systems, yeah. and everything like that. You know. So, the, you know, forward thinking organizations are already onto this as well and they're kind of embracing this and, and then realizing the, the power and potential that neurodivergent thinking brings to the table. And you've only got to look at some of the, the kind of the, the top workplace um, reports on the kind of the future of, of, of work and things like that, you know, yeah. uh, around kind of what the essential skills are going to be needed in the next, kind of next five, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and those, a lot of those um, linear type skills uh, are going to kind of become automated, and that that is that is a fact. Yes. But what's not going to become automated is creative thinking and difference of thinking, empathy, uh, and and human centered skills. Because artificial intelligence at this point in time, or perhaps even in the next 15 to 20 years, is not going to be in a position to replicate that yet. And when it does, it's probably, you know, it's probably our time to move on. <laughs> it's our time to chain. pack up. <laughs> but, yes. but, but, but for now, the skills that are emerging yeah. are going to be needed. They're going to be yeah. much more around the kind of the, the human-centred, focused, empathetic, different way of thinking, creative, lateral thinking skill. So I guess what I'm saying in a roundabout way is it's, it's a great time to be alive if you're a different thinker right now. Oh, I think that's a fabulous quote. It's a great time to be alive if you're a different thinker. I love that. In our magazine this time, Mike, that obviously you're going to be featuring, um, we've got a book review from Matthew Syed called Rebel Ideas, and it's all about cognitive diversity. It's like, it's all right thinking about diversity and inclusion, but are you thinking about how you can bring teams together who think differently? This mm -hmm. isn't just about looking differently. Mm -hmm. This is about the you know the power of the mind and mm. thought processes that go into building a fabulous team um yeah. and this is exactly what you're talking about isn't it actually it is. about people who can think differently but also people who've got those skill sets so you're perfectly suited for the the needs of organizations now and in the future in terms of mm. empathizing living and breathing your learned experiences so mm. you can really live in the shoes of you know yeah. neurodiverse people because you're going well i know what it's like i know how it's felt mm. and you've also got your coaching skills mm. and your people development it's kind of like the perfect um solution in a box there if there was a box to put to put you in there mike in terms of that's a fabulous solution because more and more organizations are, are, you know we've moved well-being's being spoke about as you quite rightly said at the very beginning but actually mm -hmm. more and more it's embracing differences and and embracing people for who they are as a human being and that you know the whole word about belonging and ensuring all employees feel that they can belong in that psychologically safe environment. We've said all, you know, but these aren't buzzwords. This is real. Mm. This is mm. this is absolutely, if you don't get this right, you're mm. going to be doing something very wrong and you're not going to win. And so yeah. actually these things are, are, you know, and I don't think it's, it doesn't feel like rocket science. It's not. You've just got to be open-minded. You've got to be able to, oh, embrace people for who they are you've got to want to be around people and, and care for who they are and, and embrace their strengths you got to take your blinkers off you know, that's yeah. the thing isn't it you know if you take your blinkers off you can see can't you yes yeah you know yeah. and i think a lot of organizations are just kind of walking around with blinkers on okay Still, they're, they're hearing some of the noise yep and kind of saying some of the right things to really kind of really get to grips with it you've got to really be prepared to change fundamentally Ask yourself, you know, how much are you prepared to change? 
can you really live up to those values? How authentic can you be? What are you prepared to change and what are you prepared to do about that? Thinking, and, and it goes back to what I was saying. At the moment, the way things are, the, the whole system still, because it's systematic, isn't it, yeah, yeah. as well? So the system is designed to not bring people through who think differently. And you could look across the whole diversity and inclusion area. You could yeah. look at, the, you know, uh, how many people progress into really senior roles who are disabled, who are your yeah. diversity, who are, who, are, who are black or from a BAME, who are yeah. LGBTQ, all the rest of it. You know, those, part, those cultural barriers are still in place and still at play. So whilst we may be progressive, there's still a long way to go. And my example of kind of, well, the way into an organisation is through the recruitment process, first and foremost, yeah. isn't it? And if, if you're still struggling to kind of, not just kind of say to someone, we'll, we'll give you an extra 10 minutes, is that okay as an adjustment? It's kind of fundamental, missing the point. Well, no, the whole way that the interview is designed doesn't get the best out of me. Yes. You know, let's have a conversation about how much you're prepared to completely change the whole interview process so yeah. you can get the, the best out of me. How many organisations are prepared to have that I conversation? Love, like? I love that. Let's start at recruitment. And and let's go be, before <laughs> there. Let's think about, you know, this is going to schools now. Surely our oh, yeah. kids are yeah. way more aware, way more, um, I'm, I'm hoping to think, way more... Um, understanding and empathetic towards yeah. different cultures, different needs. So mm. surely this is starting in schools now. And though that it's only mm. they're going to be in the workplace in the next 10 to 15 mm. years. So surely mm. they're expecting better organizations. They're expecting it, surely. Yes. Well, I can only again, give you my perspective on this of being a parent of two young yeah. children as well. And I can, yeah. I can tell you already, I mean, my. Uh, my kids are so switched on and so smart. They're absolutely aligned to things like diversity, inclusion, well-being, um, respect, how to treat people, you know, right, celebrating difference. Love They're so much more switched on to it than what I was when I went through the education yeah. system. The education in that respect as well. But in terms of what they learn, learn at home as well from just being around, you know, us as parents and things like that and, you know, seeing my kids have kind of seen more of their parents than they would have ever seen um, if there hadn't been a pandemic. Yeah. So they've seen that, that work doesn't just have to be somewhere that you just go, you lock yourself in a box and you, then you come on later at night. Actually, work is much more fluid than that now. Um, and work is, 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 yeah, there's absolutely times where people do go and my kids have seen me go out. But actually, they understand that there's a different way of doing things now yep. as well. And things have changed. The, the whole uh, way that we interact with people and, and yep. work has, has changed as well. And, and those things, kids are really smart. They're like sponges. They're learning all the time and they, they, they stick with them. They're so switched on to environment and climate change and things like that. And the values and ethics. I mean, come on. I mean, my kids are like six and they understand things. I can have a conversation about kind of values and things like that with my, with my kids now. I mean, me and we six, never did absolutely that. no chance. <laughs> yes. But think of, think of that. I mean, you know, kids now, they, they say they are the future and, and the yeah. kids coming into the workforce have been on very, very different expectations about what employment means to them, to what we have and had. So in terms of, obviously, I'm here and we talk about a coaching culture, which for us is about building organizational wide, fabulous conversations. And we talk mm. about a coaching culture is a place where authentic leaders and managers help people mm. to grow, thrive and perform mm -hmm. through effective conversations, honest feedback, underpinned by trust. That for us is a coaching culture. Mm. What would you say to organizations who are wanting to go around building a coaching culture and yeah. how they best do that and embrace the superpowers that mm. can be neurodiversity. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say first and foremost, don't just kind of jump in and go, we're going to create a coaching culture. Yeah. Because that's just too big and mm -hmm. just doesn't, doesn't happen. You're talking about cultural change, right? As we know, cultural change can take up to a decade yep. to, to, to happen. You know, yep. you, your, your background is change and transformational change, organisational change. Do so you understand and our yeah. listeners will understand that it doesn't happen overnight. So I would suggest starting slowly, incrementally, influencing people in the right places, 
uh, making coaching um, a skill set and a mindset. Uh, and, and slowly, slowly but surely, seeing those incremental changes and seeing yeah. those behaviours change, and that's and that's the way to create uh, change, creating those communities of practice. Um, you know, supporting people to train as coaches if they indeed want to train as coaches, yeah. not not forcing people to become no. coaches as well, because the will and the desire needs to be there as well, but understanding the benefits that that brings as well. And supporting line managers to be able to have more effective conversations with people, which in turn goes back to your point about if, if managers, for example, can have better conversations with people, they in turn can be more authentic conversations, which yeah. can help um, unearth that talent that you've already got that's working underneath your nose, and you can get the better results as a result of doing that, and create a more inclusive environment for people. Because often, though, people who, who who are maybe not even uh, I've kind of de- declared or even had a diagnosis or even gone for a diagnosis of, of, of a thinking of neurodiversity, yep. of a neurodivergent condition, might not feel comfortable or confident to be able to do that. It might not feel safe for them to do okay. that as well. And they'll be worried about what the consequences on them and their career might be of actually doing that as well. So until, you know, managers are able to have those types of conversations, the culture is right for that, which is coaching culture helps create that yeah. sort of environment. When, when all those things are in place, then, then you can start thinking about having a coaching culture. Yeah. But you can't, you can't just, just come up with the idea of, of kind of, we're going to create a coaching culture. It's just going to happen because it just, it just isn't. It takes all the right people, you know, to be on board with this as well as then actually winning over hearts and minds of people as well to really get that traction and results. Definitely. And having the right conversations and having those open conversations, the word authentic's come out a lot today and inclusive and empathetic. Um, and I think it's just having the bravery to to feel like you can have a, you know, we're dealing with humans, we're dealing mm. with people. Mm. That's it. We're not dealing mm. with, we haven't, we haven't started dealing too much with the robots yet. Well, I haven't spotted any anyway, but I know there are, I know they're out there, but we're dealing with human beings yeah. and we know that, the, that we're all complex. We're made up all differently. So let's yeah. just have a, a, a nurturing, caring, empathetic conversation that brings out the best in people, you know, yeah. and how can I help you would be a great a great yeah. starting question, I guess. How can I help you? What do yeah. you need from me to bring the best out of you? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is there anything else you want to share today, Mike? I'm going to ask you what's next for you and how can people contact you. But tell me if there's anything else you'd want to share today because we've covered quite a lot today. Mm. You know, you sharing, it's a great time to be alive, you know, if you think differently. And I think that is so, so true. And I think that's brilliant. Mm. And the more that message gets out, the better. Is there anything else you'd want to share today? No, I mean, I'm always grateful, Joe, to be able to be given the platform to talk about neurodiversity and, and neurodivergent and yeah. difference of, of, of thinking as well. And, and setting myself aside, I, I just kind of want to really kind of promote the power of, of people who have neurodivergent conditions and thinking yeah. as well. And if you're an employer out there thinking about that, don't be afraid to have that conversation uh, um, with your people and, and ask those questions as well. And think about the, the many benefits that neurodivergent people can bring to your organisation as well, because make no mistake, that way of thinking is the future as well. So without actually tapping into that, you're, you're doing yourself and your organisation no favours whatsoever. And what's next for Mike then? I think I know what's next, but the, the, you could be telling me all sorts. So tell everybody else what's next for you and how can people contact you? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm at the moment, I'm in the early stages of, of setting up my uh, own company, which is Be, Be Brilliant People Development uh, Limited, which is focused around coaching, training and development um, with a particular focus on supporting um, organisations around neurodiversity and, and uh individuals uh, around neurodiversity um, as well. So that could be through coaching, training or through um People development solutions or interventions. Uh, I'm currently working on kind of my uh, my, my campaign. Uh, hopefully, I have a website from running sooner or later. But at the moment, I'm, I'm working through my professional coaching qualifications. Uh, I'm, I'm well underway through my ILM Level Seven Executive yeah. Coaching and Mentoring because one of my goals is to be able to influence senior leaders and executives, particularly around 
neurodivergence and, and difference and way of thinking as well. And in terms of my own coaching um, style and how I coach my work um, as well, be that from a coaching or training or a people development perspective, uh, that's always done from a place of difference as well. I'm not, yeah. I'm not your, 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 your kind of your normal, whatever normal is, uh, coach or, or people development professional. I use my neurodivergence and my difference and my way of thinking to help my clients get the best results possible uh, and help people look at things from a different perspective and help people join the dots up because that's what I'm good at making no mistake. I'm good at joining the dots up and getting people to uh, achieve their goals and, and achieve the right kind of solutions that they're looking to to get. That sounds fabulous. It, honestly, Mike, it just feels like you've got such a fabulous opportunity and potential for the future to, you know, not just for yourself, but for so many other people on a, on a larger scale to help, um, you know, be, being you at your best to help others, which is I know where your passion is, but help them in mm. a subject where, you know, you do know a lot about. And I know you said you're not the academic expert. You've got the lived experiences and learned behaviours, which are hugely valuable. Um, and I think organisations should be tapping in to be brilliant because there's so much that I think, uh, you know, a lot of organisations need support with. And I think you're coming at this at, at the exact right time. So I'm really, I'm really pleased for you and excited to, to continue to watch slash stalk the Brie be brilliant journey to see what you get up to because i know you'll be doing a lot of great things and you shout about it on linkedin which is good so people need to be following you on linkedin yeah yeah please follow me on, on, on linkedin um i've set up my own um, linkedin be brilliant people development uh sub site now but you can always follow me if, you, if you're not already connected to my uh, my own linkedin site uh, which is mike mike bedford on on linkedin um uh, also on on twitter uh, at be Brill people on twitter be Brill now, people as, as oh, well, uh, I've got plans to uh, expand more into the kind of the social media space. Because again, that really plays to my creative side as well. So I'm looking at kind of what options are available in terms of social media presence as well. But yeah, connect with me, and if you uh, if you think you know it's something of interest, and you might want to have a conversation around uh, how we can help you and your organisations be brilliant, then, then get in touch. Brilliant, absolutely fabulous. Thank you, Mike. I've really appreciated our conversation today. I really have. Thank you, Joy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And if you want to hear more fabulous guests such as Mike on our Coaching Culture podcast, today this has been Coffee with a Coach. Uh, and I'm sure you agree it's been absolutely brilliant. And if you want to be brilliant, then certainly connect to Mike because um, you'll certainly be learning a lot and, and so much to, to learn from. So, yeah, do tune in. Thank you.